Okay, but real quick, y'all, I got something to say. Y'all need to hear this. This video is sponsored by Ask Kirby. If you guys haven't heard of Ask Kirby, Ask Kirby is basically a gossip service where basically everybody comes on here, talks their shit, and give their opinion. Basically, I look at Ask Kirby as like a ratchet Reddit. Sometimes I come on here to troll people, answer people's advice, or sometimes I just secretly come on here to get advice, and no one even knows it's me. It's always very interesting. People come on here saying the craziest things, like they need hair advice, they need vagina advice. People come on here saying things like the world is gonna end, and I'm just like, look, Fuck these taxes. If the world ends, it is what it is. Perfect for me. <laughs> that's oh, uh, that's my get out of debt free card. But if y'all are interested in Ask Kirby, please be sure to check it out. People on this app are a fucking mess, and you never know what you might see on here. So if you guys are interested, check it out on Apple or Android. Some viewers may find this disturbing. Your discretion is advised. Hi, my loves. It's Destin Choice, and you're watching Choice TV. Now, today I want to talk about this whole situation, but as I do that, I'm going to be enjoying my carne asada. I'm enjoying my late midnight snack, and I really wanted to come on here and address this whole situation going on in Florida right now. Now, here's a quick breakdown if you guys haven't heard. So, long story short, there's a woman by the name of Karina Vanessa Garabon. Now, long story short, she was dating this dude named Alejandro Sanchez. And basically, she legitimately murdered him in front of his house. She basically murdered him because they were going through an argument. And if you guys haven't heard the full story, here's the news clip of it. In Hialeah, with the emotional hearing, Hatzel. What a call. In the last hour, we have seen some of the relatives of the victims here at the house where the incident happened. We're told the family right now is planning a vigil that is expected to take place sometime this evening. As for that bond court hearing you mentioned, quite an emotional moment for that mother. She took my son's life. She shot him in his back. Karina. Corbalan. This is Karina Corbalan, the 23-year-old now accused of killing her boyfriend, Alejandro Sanchez. He argued earlier in the morning. We're learning more about what happened Monday in Hialeah. She shot my son in cold blood. Come here. She deserves to pay for that. She took his life. He was 28 so, years old. In court, Sanchez's mother could not hold back. It happened shortly before 11 a.m. on West 21st Avenue near 58th Street. Video from a nearby ring camera captured the sound of multiple gunshots. When police arrived on the scene, they say Corbalan was kneeling over Sanchez's body and later told police she had shot her boyfriend five times following an argument. Police recovered the gun they believe was used in the crime. 28-year-old Sanchez was taken to Jackson Memorial where he was pronounced dead. Back in court, emotional moments from a distraught mother. I want to be involved in everything because I want to see her pay for what she did to my family. Witnesses, uh, witnesses say Cobalon pulled up alongside Sanchez, who was in his car, and began shooting. Witnesses told police she ran over to him and asked him to wake up. The, the victim's mother was at the hearing this morning. I'm sorry for your you loss. Don't know, you don't know. I don't know. And she shot him in his back. She shot him. And killed so this, she loved it because she she took him in his arm, all full of bruises. I had to wake up, wake up. I guess she didn't realize that the bad thing she did. It's not clear what led to the confrontation. Neighbors say Sanchez and the woman dated over a year and she was frequently at his home. We haven't made an arrest yet. We're trying to get all the statements. As soon as we have all the statements and we confirm what happened here is when we're going to actually either charge this person or let him go. He wanted to have a family. He wanted to have kids. And she took it all. She took it. Justicia, que pague, que se quede en la cárcel. Que viva el dolor que yo estoy viviendo, porque a mí nunca me va a devolver mi hijo. Ella me lo quitó. I say that I'm so fucking tired of fuck shit going on in Florida. Honestly, Florida's just overall trash, and everyone in that state is fucking trash. Shit, even me. Florida is literally, let, let's, let's just put it this way. Florida's going to be Satan's first stop. Florida is going to be the first stop for Satan, and then Alabama, and then Louisiana, and then California. Honestly... Florida's just overall garbage, and there's always fuck shit going on. Like, literally, not too long ago, there was a situation where a, 
a woman with Down syndrome was gangbanged and raped by five grown ass men. And then there was a situation where a police sergeant was out here sexually assaulting young girls and manipulating them to come into his apartment. And then we had that whole bath salt situation where motherfuckers was eating niggas' faces and shit after drugs. It was just a mess. Basically, Karina so- Vanessa Carabolin, Carabolin, or, or however the fuck you say her name. But her name is basically Karina. She's a very famous Instagram model in Miami. Not only that, she's also pretty popular amongst rappers. She allegedly dated Moneybag Yo. She knows a lot of rappers. She's partied with rappers like Travis Scott, Anuel. She's just an overall groupie. She's known for hanging around a whole bunch of rappers. And she's known for basically being in the clubs all the time. There's also been a lot of speculation that she might have been a club promoter. But all we do know is that she took her boyfriend off the with her on her trips. So every time she was in the clubs or every time she was traveling to foreign countries, her boyfriend was always with her as if he was like her right hand man. And basically, she murdered him right in front of his home and she killed him literally in his driveway. Now, the reason she slaughtered him and killed him in his driveway was because they were going through some issues because they had been dating for four years. And not only had they been dating for four years, they've also have had a lot of ups and downs. Now, she was very public with him on her social media. If you go through her Instagram, you would see that they were constantly traveling, going to strip clubs. Honestly, I have no idea what this young lady did for a living, but she was a very beautiful, gorgeous girl. And she was literally out here going to Italy, Rome. She was out here going to China. She was out here going to New York every other week. I have no idea what she did i don't know what rapper she fucked i don't know if she was a club promoter or what i just know that she was always in the clubs and she pretty much had her boyfriend with her all the time so now one thing i want to point out about that news clip that a lot of y'all probably didn't notice is did y'all notice that this demonic looking bitch is literally sitting in the driveway she's literally sitting on the curb with no fucking handcuffs on. Now, if that doesn't scream white privilege, I don't know what is. And please don't come on my, come on my shit saying everything is not about race. At this point, this is about race. Like, this woman is literally sitting up here admitting to killing her boyfriend. And she's sitting on the curb with her arms crossed. Like, what the fuck is going on? Has she been black or has she been any other race? This bitch would have been in cuffs immediately her ass would have been detained in the fucking car and she's literally sitting up here on the fucking curb after she just murdered her boyfriend and admitted to it at that she shot her boyfriend 15 times well she shot at him 15 times but five of the bullets went inside of him now obviously a lot of the neighbors did come outside a lot of the neighbors did say that after she did kill him she did you know get on her knees and screamed and cried wake up wake up wake up when in reality it's just like Obviously, this was premeditated murder, and this bitch deserves to fucking rot in jail, and the key needs to get thrown the fuck away. And I found it funny how the cop was literally sitting up here. The cop, literally within hours of the shooting even happening, was sitting up here saying shit like, oh, yeah, you know, we don't know. We're we're investigating, allegedly. And, you know, if we don't find anything, we're just going to let her go. What the fuck are you talking about? Dated over a year, and she was frequently at his home. We haven't made an arrest yet. We're trying to get all the statements. As soon as we have all the statements and we confirm what happened here is when we're going to actually either charge this person or let her go. Oh, this doesn't, this, see, this doesn't make any fucking sense. At this point, I don't know what the fuck they're putting in Florida's waters, but these people are literally on fucking cock at this point. This bitch sat up here and murdered somebody. Now, let's go over to her recent court date. Now, if you guys didn't know, yesterday night, she basically was in court. She was in court, and she sat before the judge judge mindy in miami now i'm pretty sure a lot of you guys know who judge mindy is judge mindy is literally always going viral because y'all know florida we on some fuck shit over here like you know we're home of the school shootings we're home of the you know the bath so home of the mass murderers and killings and like shit that. now if you guys didn't know alejandro's mom also set a gofundme account and if you didn't see the gofundme account here it is now, a lot of the people, especially the news anchors, are scrolling around saying allegedly, allegedly, which makes no fucking sense because the bitch flat out admitted to killing it, killing this nigga. So I don't understand what the word that allegedly is coming from. Now, plus, if you guys didn't know, Alejandro's mother is very, like, very, 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 like, adamant about, you know, making sure everybody knows that that bitch killed her son. She also put up on her GoFundMe. She put in the description, and this is what she put in her description. His mother wrote, hello, my name is Amy Sanchez. I am raising money to go towards my son, who everyone likes to call Coco, whose life was taken away from his ex-girlfriend, Corina Gobalin. Monday morning, Corina shot Alex five times out of the 15 rounds, implementing him fatally on his chest. 
He was soon airlifted to Ryder Trauma Center, where he was pronounced dead. Aside from that, Alec was an amazing son, uncle, and brother who didn't deserve any of this. All donations will go towards lawyer and court expenses. And it's even more horrifying because when you see this bitch literally standing before the judge, look at her face. She looks fucking disgusting. She looks like shit. This bitch looked like she was she looked like she was having remorse when she was sitting on the curb with no handcuffs and not being detained. And then when she's standing before the judge, she has like this crazy, demonic, nasty look in her eyes. She just got this nasty, negative energy to her. Like she's not crying. She's not showing no remorse. And it's fucking disturbing. Like y'all see how ugly and raggedy this bitch look? This bitch look like the shit that be under my fucking bed while I'm having sleep paralysis. Like she looks like some demonic ass shit. Like there's something wrong with her. Like this bitch is missing some screws. Like I know I said earlier in this video that she's a beautiful young lady, but she's beautiful with all the Photoshop and the Instagram filters. Seeing her stand before the judge and seeing her literally have no remorse on her face speaks of volumes. This bitch is out of her fucking mind. Now, from what I interpreted from all the situation and doing research on her, I did notice that a lot of times when she would be traveling, because literally every other week she was in a different state, I noticed that her boyfriend was always with her. And I'm starting to think that maybe her boyfriend was probably cheating on her, and this was a situation where she was a sugar mom, where she was taking care of this dude, and she was, like, funding him, feeding him, and doing all this extra shit, and then she just got fed up with his nonsense. I don't know what was going on. Maybe this was a cheating thing. Maybe he didn't want to be with her no more. Maybe he knew this bitch was crazy, and he wanted to dump her ass. I don't fucking know, but at this point, someone literally lost their lives because a bitch can control themselves. And this is what I always got to say. This is literally my advice to everyone watching this. I want everyone to understand that if you're in a toxic relationship, get the fuck out of that shit right now. Or get counseling. Get counseling or get the fuck out of it right now. Some of y'all who are watching this are probably guilty of being in toxic relationships right now. Some of y'all are in situations where the person you're with isn't shit, is crazy, is toxic, is evil, won't get their shit together, won't do nothing with their lives. And eventually they drive you crazy. Because I'm always hearing a lot of women say... I'm only crazy because my significant other makes me crazy. And at that point, you should really reevaluate why you're even in that relationship or else you'll end up like this. You know, like, it's crazy how a lot of people have literally thought about killing their significant others or fighting or strangling their significant others due to being annoyed and due to being pissed off when it's not fucking worth it. Please, y'all, if you're in a toxic relationship, just fucking leave. It's it's just disturbing how people try to force force things that just aren't there anymore because then you get driven crazy like this bitch right here. Karina Vanessa is literally going to be able to live her life in a jail cell, and this man literally lost his family and friends. Like They had a whole memorial for him in Miami, and he's literally... He literally just lost his life. He didn't have any criminal record. He stayed out of trouble. Everybody had pretty much good things to say. And you got this bitch who's literally just going to live the rest of her life just in a jail cell. And she has the nerve to not show remorse. Please don't be like this bitch. Don't make the same mistakes she did. If you're in an abusive relationship and you know it's gotten to a point where things are physical and things have gotten violent, because there has to be a reason why she pulled out that gun. You know what I'm saying? Like, the average person doesn't say, oh, you know what, fuck that shit. You know what, I'm going to shoot somebody 15 times. Like, she knew what the fuck she was doing. Like, it doesn't make any sense. And it's crazy how the media is low-key trying to humanize her with, you know, showing her crying and showing the neighbors saying, oh, she must have felt really bad afterwards, when in reality... If this was some black people, they it just would have been like, oh, black people always killing each other, or just some toxic hood ass shit. But in reality, a lot of people were just trying to humanize this bitch. There's no excuse for for her ever pulling a gun and trying to kill somebody because that's just fucking evil and just vindictive. But I really want to know what drove her to being this fucking insane. What made her think, okay, I'm gonna pull out a gun and just kill some nigga 15 times, like. And she's going to hell right in a fucking handbasket with her botched cute ass and everything. This is why I always tell people, y'all, please stop putting these relationships on a pedestal. A lot of people love putting these relationships on pedestals when it's just like a lot of these people really are unhappy. Like I know several people who are influencers, people that I know, people that I've seen in general. I'm sure even y'all can relate where one individual is cheating on a significant other. They put on this happy facade on social media because literally I would have never thought that this would have happened. If I followed her on social media, I would have never thought she would have killed him because literally two weeks ago, they were just on social media, posted up, doing their thing. They were together for four years and now it's all over the news and going viral 
that she done killed his ass. Yeah, you know, social media has pretty much heightened and enlightened the facade that relationships are fucking perfect. You know, it's the same thing with De'Ara and Ken. You know, congratulations to De'Ara Ken getting married and shit, but even Ken cheated on De'Ara. Even Jay-Z cheated on Beyonce. It's just so much shit that goes on with these couples behind the scenes, but a lot of people love to put them on pedestals and say, oh, y'all are goals, y'all are goals. Couples are not goals. Couples are just couples. You know, it's a shame. This dude was so young. He was literally 28 years old, never got a chance to be a father, never got a chance to pursue football because apparently he was really big at football in his city. He could have done a lot of things. He could have been married. He had, he could have had a happy family and he couldn't even live to see his 30s. And that's so unfortunate. This bitch is 23 years old, 23 years old, looking like shit, aging like milk and shit, looking like she damn near 80, killed somebody and took his life away from him over some petty fuck shit what the fuck she just walking around with guns in her purse and shit trying to kill people you know like i always say there is always two sides to every story maybe there's a deeper issue in the situation maybe there's something that he did although that's not an excuse to have him killed or shoot him in general because we can't really have more people out here dying over fuck shit and unhappiness and toxic behavior so please y'all stop encouraging your friends to remain in toxic situations stop ignoring the fact that your friends and family are in toxic relationships speak up do something offer some help and if they don't want to do it then hey it is what it is but it, it doesn't hurt to try and a lot of times what you can do is usually give guidance but it's you know never really safe to just let your friend self-destruct on their own so at this point no more ass pics for karina no more bodge body pics for karina her life is over she's 23 years old and now she has spent the rest of her life in jail just because she was in an unhappy relationship it's funny because all this shit could have been avoided had her dumb ass, her crusty, aging like banana ass, just picked up her shit and left the relationship. And I know it sounds easier said than done, but it would have been all avoided had she just said, okay, you know what? I'm not happy in this relationship. I'm pissed. I'm annoyed. I'm upset. I'm going to leave the relationship. If the person you're with is on some fuck shit, not getting their shit together, not getting their life together, just leave. It's that easy. I know it sounds easier said than done, but it's easy. Pick up your shit and leave. And if you guys know any other information about this whole story, people should have feel free to hit my email. Let me know what you guys think about it. Um, people should have give your thoughts in the comment section down below. And yeah, that's that. Choice out this bitch. Let me know. Let me know. Let me know. That's all you get for free. Come along, I should sing next.